Welcome, everybody. This is the U.S. Grace Force Podcast. I'm Doug Barry, along with my very good friend and most amazing Father Richard Howman. Most amazing. Wow. Most thank you. Amazing. We, wow. we added most in there. You're, you're not just yeah. amazing. You're most amazing. Oh. And we've got with us most amazing Monsignor Pope yeah. is with us tonight. Yes. Also ran amazing. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So it's going to be a great episode, of course. We're going to be talking about there is something happening, and we want to address it. We want to get kind of a state of the union or state of the church address from Monsignor, and we'll break that down. But of course, everything begins with prayer. Father Heilman, turn that over sure. to you. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That's wonderful. Thank you very much, Father. And thank all of you out there who support the U.S. Grace Force podcast. We always want to start the episode off by letting you know that you are in our prayers all the time. And we mean that. Thank you so much for your comments, your encouragement, your prayers for us as well. And for those of you who support us through the Patreon program, we thank you for that. Those of you who might be interested in helping us financially with a few dollars, I would say a few dollars goes a long way when we get a lot of people on board. We could reach, we can reach a lot more people that way. So it's a big help. So please <clears throat> click the link in the description below if you're interested in helping us out through the Patreon program. Very powerful way to help us continue to spread the word. Don't forget the U.S. Grace Force gear page. We got some great. We got T-shirts and hoodies and sweatshirts and all that great stuff out there. Good messages to share with others, and also a great way to support the work that we're trying to do here. So please check that out as well. And of course, Father Heilman, we've reached into the bullpen and found one of our favorites with Monsignor Pope here, yep. and this is going to be good. Um, I know, you know, the memory of some of the things you have said, Monsignor, in the past has been, you know, really struck a chord, and uh, it's just always good to have you on. So. Yeah, be here. Thanks. Yeah, Monsignor, uh, I, I've been a fan of yours for many, many years. You're a great. You're, you're <laughs> using um, a new media to teach, and uh, and you, you just your profound teachings. And uh, I, I can't <laughs> wait when I see it come up on on social media or whatever uh, to read what you're writing next. Um, <laughs> you're you're a priest in the Archdiocese of Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. uh, we've known you, I think, for years now. Uh, had you on the yeah. podcast many, many times, and you've graciously said you'd, yeah. you'd come on. But again, a, a great teacher uh, <laughs> and, and and an exorcist. Um, and so um, you, obviously you have a lot of background there. And uh, But Monsignor, I, you know, I wanted to start out because, uh, well, well, first of all, I want to say this. Uh, one of the striking things I remember is right after um, the, it, it appeared to be uh, that there was a, a uh, pagan idol brought into the to the Vatican uh, in mm -hmm. 2019. Right, uh, you were struck by that, <clears throat> and you asked everybody to pray uh, because uh, if 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 God acts in the way He has in the past with through salvation history, that uh, he, you didn't know what He'd do, but oftentimes it, you you set a plague, <laughs> and that was like October of uh, 2019, <laughs> and we didn't even know about. A China virus until like what right. February of twenty twenty, and yeah, uh, apparently you, you were right about that, and um, so yeah. uh, you're right about a lot of things, and uh, we just love um, getting you on and and having you, you share your insights in, into uh, into the faith, into uh, what mm -hmm. what uh, God's up to, what evil's up to, and everything. Nice. So, Monsignor, uh, I want to start out just by asking um, our title. It's uh, why is evil uh, erupting in these historic times? Mm -hmm. And I re we really wanted to pick your brain on this because uh, I, I think anybody that's tuned in, and what do I mean by tuned in? I, I've kind of noticed through all this, especially in the last four or five years, that people who in the first instance might be called conspiracy theorists, uh, all of a sudden those conspiracies end up being correct. And uh, I've just noticed that it's usually devout people or people who believe in the supernatural power of grace yeah. and lean into it and try to, you know, uh, possess this, this power of God that, that he graciously wants all of us to have. But it's devout people that, that seem 
uh, tuned in dur dur uh, during these times that we've gone through. But but we've been saying, you know, and the warning bells have gone out, and then some of some of the uh, spiritual leaders have been canceled for trying to sound the alarm. But um, mm -hmm. anyway, it, it just seems like something's going on, yeah. especially in the last four or five years. But also, uh, we were talking before the show started. I said I do remember when you didn't really hear about exorcists and all, and all of a sudden all the dioceses, I think all at once, um, started to get exorcists trained and, and get ready because there was this sense. I remember too, that we, um, we were, uh, getting trained on how to protect churches because mm -hmm. there was, uh, physical, uh, threats against churches. And so all this, uh, Monsignor, uh, during this particular time, uh, do you have any insights as to, why now? What? Why in this historic moment are we seeming to be, you know, punch drunk with the next thing that that evil se seems to be um, attacking us with? Right. Yeah, I mean, it's coming so rapid fire, man. Yeah. That we don't even have time to react to the one thing before some other ignominy is, is revealed. Yeah. <laughs> People are like it's kind of a clown car, you know? <laughs> right. And uh, it's it's just one weird thing after another. I will say this. Um, it would seem, you know, I go back to Archbishop Fulton Sheen, who sort of had his own theory that about every 500 years, the church goes through a great travail. And so in the first, you know, around the fifth, uh, the, you know, the beginning of the sixth century, all those heresies and things that had come to a head and we, the church descended into kind of the dark ages. And then around the year 1000, of course, the great Eastern schism, Great 1500, uh, or the, you know, the, the 16th century, uh, the great Western schism, you know, with the Protestants the revolt. And now here we are at another 500 year period. Now, I don't mean to say that we're it's fatalistically described that we're just always going to have that, but it does seem to follow a pattern. And I, I think that I don't know if we're at the end of the world. I do, I think we all know this we are at the end of an era. Christendom yep. is over. Is gone, and now, and I don't mean the church, but I mean that that sense where the, the Christian culture had come, you know, had had permeated, um, and and even if we had sectarian differences, the basic biblical narrative was something that everybody still largely held in common. Uh, the basic moral norms of Scripture and so on were, I mean, you know, I'm I'm old enough, and you know, I think you know we all are to remember, uh, gosh. When pretty much everybody went to church, yeah. Um, I remember go back to just even Ronald Reagan's first uh, election. I think it was 1980. Yeah. People were really shocked, and it was a real major thing that he had been divorced and remarried. Yeah, I mean that was not taken lightly. That was a major reason why many people might not vote for him. Right. I mean, you know, we can't even imagine that today. You right. know, just here we are. You know, it's thirty, strong forty years sense later. Of right versus wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's happened and it's kind of, it's been rapid fire. And I just, for me, the banner year was 1968. And I think the gates of hell were open and all the bats flew out. What a horrible year that was, you know, all the revolt against Humani Vitae in the church, but you also had the assassination of Martin Luther King and, and, and Kennedy, uh, Robert Kennedy. And, um, you know, you had all kinds of, uh, you know, the, the riots in the streets. Yeah, the, the anti-war stuff, but all the right. summer of live and Woodstock and, yeah. you know, kids just getting drunk and just, you know, the flower power, all that horrible. It was a horrible time. Yeah. And it almost exploded out of, I wouldn't say it was simmering, but it really exploded and came on the scenes and it just sent us reeling. And we're, we're still dealing with the with the results of that revolution. It was a cultural revolution. It was a sexual revolution. It was a feminist, feminist revolution. It was a revolution against authority, a revolution against tradition. Just everything must go. Fire sale. And, yep. you know, I, I, I don't know what year you were born, my father or, or, or Doug, but I was born in 1961. I'm so I'm technically at the very end of the baby boom. Um, yep. And I want to just apologize <laughs> to the people who are younger than I am, that I am... I'm the one of the final members of, of, of the one of the most corrupt, egotistical, prideful, yeah. nasty, yeah. iconoclastic, yeah. stupid and foolish generation that's ever been <laughs> conceived of and born. Right. And you know, the greatest generation raised the worst generation, you know? Yeah. Mm. And it's just awful world. So it's an aftermath that we're in. And yes, then that revolution got into the church and hijacked the council and 
uh, all the way that the council was interpreted and there are all kinds of chaos into the church and, you know, anything goes. And I thought we were finally getting our senses back. And then, well, Pope Francis told everyone to make a mess. Yeah. And we're back in the mess. So yeah. I think somewhere along the line, we just have to say, this is where we are. And I think we talked about this quote from the catechism before, uh, Father, but I think it's important always to remember it. Um, that uh, verse uh, number 675 in the catechism before Christ's second coming, the church must pass through a final trial that will shake the faith of many believers. You know, this persecution that accompanies her pilgrimage on earth will unveil the mystery of iniquity in the form of a religious deception, offering men an apparent solution to their problems at the price of apostasy from yep. the truth. You know, come on, man, tolerance, let's all get along and. Stop being so negative and, you know, yeah. all that old Bible stuff is just, you know, you know, that kind of stuff. That's apostasy. See, and then the supreme religious deception is that of the Antichrist, a pseudo-Messianism by which man glorifies himself and in and, uh, and, uh, and, and the place of God and his Messiah come in the flesh. And so, you know, welcome to the whole, <clears throat> you know, UN uh, resolve of 2030. Welcome to the global globalism. Welcome to the World Economic Forum. You know, welcome to all these people who want to substitute themselves for the place of God and God's teachings and and uh, and and the Lord God Himself. And a lot of people are running after this and being set into a panic by this global warming panic, which is just really. I mean, come on. Yeah. Come on, lighten up, everybody. We're going to be okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, it, there's a there's an article out right now, Monsignor. I just pulled it up here again on Fox News. It came out, um, I think, yesterday. Attacks against churches doubled in 2023. Mm -hmm. Report warns that there's a growing disdain for Christianity here in America. Yeah. Um, that in 2023, a doubling of attacks found 436 hostile incidents against churches in 2023. Mm -hmm. more than double the number in 2022. Yeah. So that part that you mentioned that the church isn't dead but there's there's something in the air that really is going after Christianity and even those that are considered in you know not to 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 get into the whole political section here so much but of course you're in DC area so you know mm -hmm. this this idea of Christian uh nationalism and that terminology that's being that's painting a lot of people yeah. uh who are just wanting you know you know more traditional conservative values and where it's it's a nationalist thing and, you, and it's evil and it's bad and so there does seem to be a very concerted effort to go after christianity to to paint the name bad that churches are being attacked more yeah. obviously our teachings and principles have been yeah. um and do you, i'm sure you see that from where you are out there in the dc area in particular don't you i do and um you know inside the beltway is a kind of a strange little bubble Every now and again, when I get to get out of it, it's wonderful for me to go. For example, I was in Wichita a few years ago, <clears throat> and people were talking about stuff like cattle futures and mm. uh, how much uh, the price of corn was. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> that sounds like real things, you know, not like, right. you know, who's who's up and who's down and all the crazy stuff. And, and, you know, there was just, it was about regular, normal life. And I'm not saying it's perfect in Wichita. I'm just saying it's just, re it's a great relief, though, to be free of so much of the foolish, you know, sort of inside the beltway thinking that we just, yeah. and we think everybody's worked up. But I will say this, um, I, I certainly have reason to hope. I mean, we all have, being God is, this is, God is not surprised. Uh, God has always known about this moment. And there are no, there's no panic in heaven, just plans. I just wish the Lord would tell me a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but, but I will say this, that um, I know what I have to do. And uh, Father, you know what you have to do. And Doug, you know what you have to do. And that is to say, preach the gospel. It's out of season right now. But Paul told Timothy, preach the gospel in season and out of season, mm -hmm. whether popular or unpopular. People, There's times coming when people won't tolerate sound doctrine. Preach it anyway. You know, do fulfill your ministry, do the work of an evangelist. So we know what we have to do. And, you know, as priest, father, and then Doug, you know, if, if regarding family of children, grandchildren, just keep preaching, keep teaching. Years ago, my brother, John came to me and said, what am I supposed to do in this mess? I said, well, get married first, have lots of kids, raise them Catholic and set them loose. Yep. And that's what he's done. He's got nine kids. <laughs> oh. 
And they raised them, they homeschooled them, and um, they're they're in the FSSP parish up there in Idaho. And those kids are solid. They're solid, and they're going to go take on the world. And mm. but you know, we got to prepare. I will say this, especially for you and me, Father. We clergy have not done well in preparing no. God's people for martyrdom. No. Nope. And it's going to take a recovery of the understanding of becoming martyrs, yep. whether of bread martyrdom or, you know, uh, the other types of, you know, suffering. But there's going to be a lot of suffering we're going to have to endure for right. the truth. And we have to be willing. Everybody wants to turn religion into some kind of therapeutic or bromide mm -hmm. to just make them feel better. Well, guess what? It doesn't always work that way. Sometimes yeah. the Lord has to say, take up that cross and come follow me. And let's bravely take this hill of Calvary because yeah. we're going over the top. Well, and you're exactly right. And I, uh, every time I get on this topic with anybody, the first thing I say is, "We're, we're weak," but but then I point at myself, mm. and and I and I say, mm. "It's the spiritual leaders." Yeah, where are they? I mean, with with this eruption, I mean, you could go back to Roe v. Wade for one. I mean, yeah. I I didn't think it, there was a, a a solid spiritual pushback uh, during <laughs> that. We kind of. It kind of was allowed to be normalized in a lot of ways. Mm. Sure, there were pockets of people that were doing their pro-life efforts, but where was the united, concerted effort uh, to 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 shout this down, basically, and just say, "No, <laughs> you can't do that." Uh, right. But th that's going back. But but look what's being uh, ushered in during our yeah. time, and yeah. right now, and it and I'd got, like you get your opinion on uh, Monsieur, but. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with fear. Yeah. I think evil <laughs> is just arrogant right now, yeah. and it's aggressive. Yeah. And and we will destroy mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. you know. And look at the canceling that's going on. Yeah. You know, a, a lot of a lot of what's happening to priests is that some far left wing will report on them, and then the bishop yeah. does the bidding yeah. of that far left publication. Yeah. And 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 uh, and so. Who wants to speak up? Who wants to to say no? That's we can't accept that as a new normal. Uh, you know that because that's. Mm -hmm. I mean, you said it. We we used to go to church. Everybody used to go to church. Everybody knew right or mm -hmm. wrong. Everybody, okay. you know, had a sense of morals and ethics and values and virtues and principles. They all they, they had a. It was in their bones. And now it's it's these new narratives are twisting everything, yeah. and and people unfortunately, especially with the internet now, are getting indoctrinated. Uh, their 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 brain pattern, their heart and soul pattern, is mm -hmm. getting manipulated, and 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 I, I don't know. I'm I, I'm in like panic mode in that. No, no, you can't. No, no, no. What they're saying there is not true. <laughs> Right, right. And 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 here's what the gospel uh, teaches. Here's what the Ten Commandments are all about. Here's what God wants us to do in this time, not yeah. the new normal that yeah. they they're ushering in eloquently. I mean, their narratives are incredible. Mm -hmm. you know, women's health care, you know, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so, um, what is <clears throat> what is going to uh, Monsieur? Is there anything? Because yeah. see. It's about influencers, isn't it? It's it's people you trust, and we're called father. We're the dad. Mm -hmm. We're the Saint Joseph. Right. And if and if we don't see a problem with it, okay, mm -hmm. why should they? Right. But if we do see a problem, you see, what I'm saying, well, mm -hmm. is there anything you think, Monsignor, that can flip that? Yeah. Because what what we're seeing right now is seemingly a handful of people. Then then they just get canceled because they're a threat they're a threat to the agenda of this marxist liberate lib liberation theology whatever you want to call yeah. what's going on right now uh they're a threat to that they get pummeled and yeah. the bishops do their bidding um right. what's gonna what's gonna flip this Monsi or is anything yeah. the only thing is going to be radical courage now we'll get to that but you notice how um the lord made an observation which remains so true today that the the people who of the darkness and of this world are far more cunning in dealing with their own than are the sons of light yes uh you know the the left you know i would argue the woke left 
is 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 it's it's it's, a, it's beyond a political movement. Oh yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's just basically a, a, an iconoclastic Marxism that yep. seeks to destroy. Yep. But it, it it is it is fearless. It is dedicated. Oh. It's uh, united. It, it is united. Uh, in, yeah, and 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 it's also a very outspoken and in many ways very fearless. They don't care what our feelings. They don't care about hurting our feelings. But we're like, oh, I might hurt somebody's feelings. Right. I know. Or, yeah. or they're up early yippee, and we're, we're just Jesus. getting out of bed to get to church. I and mean, we complained that the air conditioning wasn't working. You yeah. know, come on. We're weak. We're, you know. Anyway, the point is that, unfortunately, the left is far more dedicated and cunning than our most Christians now. Yep. And it's going to be like it always is, though, I think, Father, if you look at church history, the Lord brings back the day and he wins the day with a small remnant. Not with the vast majority. The vast majority are lost in, in, the, in the mess. It's a, it's a small remnant. And it, sometimes even just an individual, like, you know, in the darkness of the 13th century, suddenly this weird dude named Francis of Assisi starts wandering around, and or Catherine of Siena starts writing letters and gathering a little community of light around her. Or, you know, you, you go a little further into the 16th century, and this strange nun who herself was sort of lost, but she found her way back, and her name was Teresa of Avila and John of the Cross. And, you know, you, you get these moments where it's almost like out of the blue comes an individual and the Lord just anoints them to summon us home. So it's going to take, I think, something like that. But I will say that rare, my father made an observation years ago. He's, he's long since deceased now. But he, he said, Charlie, he says, of all the virtues, courage is the least to be observed in the human family. Okay. <laughs> and he, I, I kind of thought, well, that's kind of an interesting statement, but I, I didn't really think much of it, but I've come to realize it. And, you know, it's it's easy to get scared. The left knows how to control us with fear. Well, look and at he, the apostles all but John. Yeah. Boom, John made gone. it, but he was the only one. The rest of them yeah. were all hiding out. Things yep. have not changed, have they, Father? <laughs> nope. No courage there. No. Yeah. It's, that, it's, by the way, uh, that's that's John the Beloved right behind me. Yeah. Okay. Great. Oh, yeah. Super. Yeah. Yeah. And anyway, he's and he's holding that chalice full of poison. They they came, yep. they came for him. They came. Yeah. There was him. a there was a news report that uh, they tr they they put poison in the priest's chalice. In one part of the world. Mm -hmm. I don't remember mm -hmm. where it was. That that just broke minutes before we started. Okay. My yeah, gosh. It smelled the chlorine or something. Or it smelled what what was well, that? I I take it as a compliment that the the left still sees us as a worthy opponent. Yeah. <laughs> well, no. I, we're not a worthy opponent because of no. us. We're the, the only reason we're a worthy opponent is because of Jesus. All right, let's be honest about that. Yeah, Grace. but at the end of the day, we have to start to live up to it. And so I think, Father, it's got to start with men like you and me, and Doug with you, and you know, in the family and among the lady. It's going to just take us standing up and being courageous. Now we have to be at times prudent. Right now, we're in a situation where sadly, so much of the persecution comes from inside the church. Right, it's awful. It's just awful, but it's it's always been somewhat the case. It's uh, you know you you know those famous stories about I don't know Napoleon was this case with was Jesus, told, you yeah. brood of vipers, right? Yeah, right. You snakes, who's going to yes. save you from eternal damnation, right? Right. Those were the spiritual leaders of his day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And then his own apostles. You know, as I say, it's never been a really powerful picture, and yet weirdly, the Lord is able to cons consistently win. But I will say that I know where this is going to end up. It's going to end up in total victory for Jesus. But in the meantime, we've got, you know, a, a theater of redemption that we're living in. And and by gosh, we got to get up off our butts and go out and do what we're supposed to do. Yep. Uh, otherwise, we will be judged poorly by the Lord, and yep. especially us priests. We're yep. going to be judged the most harshly of all, because to whom much is given, much will be expected. So somewhere along the line, the antidote then for this fear of the world is the fear of the Lord. Yep. Where I'm more concerned about what the Lord thinks of me than what some stupid leftist in a new university thinks of me, or even sadly, um, uh, you know, a certain bishop or a certain pope or whoever, in the, even in the church who stands against me. Now, we have, you know, to stay obedient. We have to be careful, Father. Yes. We're men under authority. Yes. But we also have to know that <clears throat> our first obedience has got to be to God, and we have to be in a relationship, I think, with our bishops and so on, that we can say, well, uh, Your Excellency, I think you've you've got to think differently than you know, and and to honestly go to them and speak to them and with 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 that love and respect, but also with clarity. 
Right. And uh, so somewhere we have to rediscover a healthy authority. Authority doesn't just mean an unhealthy deference. And I'm yeah. afraid that we were raised, you know, as much as we can look back to the good old days when, you know, everyone went to church, there was an unhealthy deference. I think, it, well, Father says, well, you know, it can't be wrong. The priest said so. Well, <laughs> we've had to wake up to the ugly reality about that. It's not, you know, or again, you know, the bishop says, or the Pope says, and we have to somehow, we have to sort of sort this out and be careful to realize that can be generally true, but there are going to be exceptions where we have to stand up and say, that's not what God says. Right. And even if it involves a clergyman of any level or any rank. So somewhere we have to, I think there's something, there's a little bit of a, a retooling, I think, going on among God's good, holy people. I think we, to go with what Richard, I mean, with um, uh, Peter Kwasniewski's book, you know, hyper, on hyperpapalism, I think somewhere along the line, we got into a little bit of an unhealthy state with the papacy that, that clearly has as a critical role, but, but it doesn't mean the way we've been living it. Like, well, I can't say anything. The Pope said this, or, you know, we have to recover a healthy respect for authority that includes an, that excludes an unhealthy deference right. and a healthy engagement. Like Peter, when, I mean, when Paul, when he went to Peter and said, my brother, I think you, you taught rightly, but you're not living rightly, you know, and uh, they're, 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 these moments come. And I think somewhere along the line, it's going to take uh, more courage than a lot of people have. But if I could maybe uh, move on a little bit to maybe what what you as we talked earlier, what what there what is there that seems to be coming? You know, I think well, let's let's be honest. I mean, first of all, Our Lady on countless places, Fatima certainly, Akita, so many of these places has said, you know, you're going to be in the hurt locker until you come back to my son and listen to him and start praying the rosary, and uh, and really bringing back souls and realizing that you're in a war and you you got to engage this battle. So I think of my rosary, Father, and this is based on you. Uh, I think of my rosary as a 50 round clip <laughs> against the devil, right? And, you know, it matters every day, whether we pray our rosary, it matters whether we uh, engage in the battle, whether we, we talk to our children about what's right and wrong, whether we pre stand in the pulpit and speak to people and summon them to courage. These things really matter. There you go. Yep. Yep. There's the, there's the battle weapon right there. You know, yep. it's, it, it, it is a 50 round clip. Yep. And she was very good. She said, but if you're not going to do that, you better expect to be in the hurt locker and it's going to get worse and worse. And it's going to be worse than you could ever imagine. Yeah. She's a good mother. She's not some just eh, with her head tilted saying, I love you. She's a good mother. She's like a Jewish mother. She goes, ah, you're breaking my heart. Yeah. Come on, you know, let's, let's get on our knees and pray. Yeah. And, um, so I think we have to see that she's been telling us this for a while, that this, this was not, we, we were not, we, we, we've been warned. And if we want to kick God to the curb, which we've done in our culture in the West, push him off to the margins, if we want to go ahead and do that, we're going to be in a very ugly, dark, bitter place very quickly. And I think we've, we've engaged the experiment and the, the jury is certainly back. You know, can we have anything close to a functioning culture if there's no shared cultus, that is to say devotion or worship of Almighty God. We can't. Right. Because if there isn't a higher authority or something that unites us in our various diversities and differences, there's nothing to live for. It's, it's, there's, no, there's no source of unity. Diversity right. is not our strength. It can be a strength, but only if we have above that a unity. And, you know, um, an, an unum from the e pluribus, you know, and without it, we, we, we're we just we're just our own worst enemy. We just bicker and fight until we're all dead. Yep. And it's a terrible situation that we're in. And it's uh, it basically comes down to the rejection to the rejection of God uh, and his and his testimony and his word to us and all the stuff that we've been banding oh this isn't really a christian nation yes it is it's a, it, it's the it came from the fair flower of the judeo-christian vision of of the world and of life and that's where it came from and you throw that away and everything goes with it including the constitution and that's another thing the left is doing they don't just get rid of the bible they've gotten rid of the constitution right and everything is just what they say. It's all about power. We the, the locus of truth moves from the from the intellect to the will. We 
we meaning i i say what something means and by god uh, if you, i if if somebody says he's a he's a woman when he's really a man you will go along or i'll see you in court you bigot yep it's all about power and yelling the who has the biggest guns and the the power is so much for all this tolerance that they preached they never meant it and they certainly didn't mean to include catholics anyway this is where we are so then again what what are we going to do and i think there's different models as you know um we have the Benedict option. And I've, I know some families who have done that, including, I would say, largely one of my brothers who has chosen to kind of take his family into a kind of a, a selected community centered around a Latin mass community in Idaho, a uh, fraternity parish. And um, <clears throat> they, they raise their kids off offline, so to speak. There isn't a lot of internet in their house and those kinds of things. It's very strictly controlled. And They've been very careful to raise their kids. Uh, that's kind of the Benedict option, going into the desert, so to speak. There, some of the rest of us, I don't have that option. I'm a diocesan priest, which means I'm in secula, <laughs> that I'm in the world, and I'm, I have to go and engage the world. And um, I try to do it, as you do, Father, is through th this podcast, but so many other ways as well, all the different mm -hmm. ways that we can engage the world and say, you know, there's a better way. Yeah. Um, you know, this world of meaninglessness or just everybody making up their own meaning isn't working. And uh, we have to discover there is a meaning to life and that suffering, even suffering the worst thing has a, has a meaning and, and it produces glory and be of good courage and keep fighting the good fight and get your, get you and everyone you can bring with you to heaven. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, most Catholics, by the way, you know, don't never talk about heaven. And most of us priests never talk about it. Our, the sermons are more about how to kind of get through this life. Well, okay, that's, that's not wrong, but w do people long for heaven? Do they even talk about it anymore? Is there even really any, any uniting goal? Right. The mm -hmm. people just say, everything else is on hold. My whole life is going to be devoted on this one. I'm seeking first the kingdom of God. Nobody talks like that. Monsignor, certain things obviously have been going on in, the, in society. There are some key things that really are are disturbing uh mm -hmm. saint patrick's cathedral for example can you mm -hmm. talk a bit about that and anything else that comes to your <laughs> mind that really are examples of this eruption of evil mm -hmm. um that you're seeing from your perspective yeah well you know one of the <coughs> excuse me <coughs> one of the issues in our culture is that nothing is sacred anymore nothing right and um so this group thinks they have a perfect right to go into the cathedral and just talk about the most awful language, you know, taking, you know, uh, you know, uh, talking about, um, you know, St. Cecilia as the queen of whores and all these terrible things that went on there. And all I can say is that, um, you see how they don't care what we feel. They just don't care. Now, I'm not saying we should just go shake our fist and, and not give a rip what they feel. But at the end of the day, just, just at least be aware that all this talk about how we should be nice and tolerant and so on is um isn't getting us anywhere and we just there's no respect for the church they, they had they felt like they had a perfect right to just come in dress like they were and misbehave and goof off and do all those things before the mass and then once the mass and by the way never open up the microphone for a eulogy at a funeral it's not his purpose in my parish we don't tolerate there are not going to be family members coming up to speak at the end of a funeral if they want to say a word or two before the mass begins fine well not fine we even have to vet that very carefully because i don't want to hear about uncle joe and how he loved to play poker that's not that's not edifying right, right. so again but we're careful to vet that but at the end of the day once that funeral is underway that is the mass and that is the that is an act of jesus christ and his body the church and all this kind of foolishness of adding all this stuff and stuff that people want to add into funerals no no not appropriate for, because, for those who who might not know exactly what i mentioned um could you tell us a little bit about what it was it took place it was a it was a funeral that took place at st patrick's cathedral for a transgender activist wasn't it yeah there was this so-called transgender he's a man but he called himself a woman i think cecilia or something and um he was a um he she, he was a, a prostitute I, I don't even know how all that works with all the this trans this and trans i don't even know i don't have no idea but anyway he, he he lived a life at complete odds with what god has set forth for human sexuality the script this teaching to the scripture and so on he he, he didn't he could declared himself to be an atheist 
Um, although he was, uh, at some point they say he was trying to find his way back to God. Well, <laughs> it's called repent and believe the gospel. But anyway, the point being is that, um, um, this was, you know, and, and they asked to use St. Patrick's for a, a funeral, uh, for him. Uh, he wasn't Catholic, but they, for whatever reason, the, the cathedral said, okay, fine. But they didn't do what they should have done, namely to be very careful to vet this and say, look, this is how we run a funeral here. And we're going to expect that people um, be uh, properly and adequately dressed. And, you know, when they enter and behave themselves and not yell and run around and dance in the aisles and do a lot of crazy stuff. And, you know, these are the kinds of things that, you know, you have to you have to be careful about, but you see, again, none of those people who came and thought, well, this is who cares. There's nothing sacred about this place. It's just some building. It's all about us. It's about what we want to do. And there was no teaching, no limit set. And all of a sudden the thing just erupted and went crazy. And you've got people coming up and uh, talking about St. Cecilia, the, 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 the patron saint of whores. And you're like, what? You know, and these are our Saint Cecilia is sacred to us. She's a saint and she was a virgin martyr for heaven's sakes. That's, but it's just Satan shaking his fist. See, that's what took place. Now, again, all of this, I think, comes back again to where we are today as a church and where we are in our culture. And that is to say that the woke left is fierce. They're in your face. They don't care what you think. And to their credit, they're strong. Yeah. And they really believe what they're saying, even if it's just for the next 20 minutes when they reinvent. I know it's all very ephemeral. They're reinventing themselves every 20 minutes. But that's just the point. It's about chaos. It's about iconoclasm. It's about destruction. It's not about any new order. It's just being nutso in the moment. And But they're, they're fierce about it. And they're very strong about it. And they, they really work at it. Whereas we're like half asleep, kind of saying, well, okay. Let's not resist this too much because we might get in trouble. And, um, you know, so again, you see, they're strong and we're weak and something's backward here. And so it says a lot about the church and a lot about how we run things. Now, you would think a cathedral would have a large staff that could vet this, you know, and, and seen this through. Um, but they didn't. And uh, they were derelict in their duty. And uh, I think... Cardinal Dolan was a little too apologetic for the whole mess that this was. And um, at some point, again, they, the left, are strong and we are weak. Right. And that's on us. We well, and I think a lot of it too, Monsignor, is that we're seeing it not only in the culture, but also in the church, mm -hmm. that there's no consequences for that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Right? It, it just, it, well, I mean, you can... You can there are. Loot, you can loot a store, or you can, you know, you can do basically anything you want. Yeah. And e even if they arrest you, they're going to throw you back out on the street. Um, you know, come out across the border, and we, you can go to your your trial in ten years. I mean, they're laughing at us. They're laughing at us. And and again, yeah. it gets back <clears throat> with me. It gets back to the spiritual leaders. We got to be right. tough. We got we got to be good dads. Good dads keep people. Mm -hmm. Keep their their children in line, okay? I mean, they'll they'll try to do it by blessing and in, in every mm -hmm. way they can to to show them, and that's what God the Father does. You know, He yeah. He blesses us, but sometimes you know, I, and that's why I think a God spanking is imminent uh, <laughs> with what's going on right now. Yes, Lord, you know, because he's a little of the right wrath of God right now, right? But there's no consequences, is what right. it is. Right. <clears throat> and again, I get back to. <clears throat> the spiritual leaders of our time. They're not standing up well, and, and in I, essence shouting down. But Father, can I raise a paradox with you? Yeah. There are a few things they do stand up about. All right. But what they stand up about is the oddest things. So if, if let's take a different scenario. Somebody knocks on the door at St. Patrick's Cathedral and says, so-and-so has died and they were a great leader in the traditional Latin mass movement in the city, and they'd like to have a solemn high Tridentine um, funeral mass, or even just a low mass. Right. Do you think that would have gone anywhere? No. It would have been forbidden right from the get-go. Yep. That's not going to happen. Now, I don't know specifically in New York, but I'm just saying, this, what we are, you can all do almost anything in the church today except the tradition. Yeah. And that suddenly... 
many bishops, not all, many, there are many good bishops who are supportive, but there are an awful lot who otherwise are just out to lunch with any other leadership, but suddenly they get fierce and, and very, yep. you know, yes, you know, when, when it comes to the Latin mass, it is a very strange paradox. Yep. And it shows you the devilishness of what's happened even in the church, that um, there are just some places that um, even the weakened clergy can't and won't go. But the bridge too far <laughs> is the, the bridge of sacred tr or holy traditions, you know, the, right. the form of the mass that was celebrated for almost 1,500 years. Well, I think reverence Out. alone is, huh? is reverence alone yeah. is right. something that they just tamp down <clears throat> on and yeah. they're very strict about. And so, you're famous, Father, for yeah. doing a very reverent Novus Ordo. I like the new Mass. I, if, especially I do, too. if I could use all of its options. Right, exactly. I like it. <laughs> the new Mass that actually uh, was promulgated by Sacrosanctum Concilium. Yeah. You know, and again, I, I might get into some trouble with the traditionalists for that, but you know, I, I like the new Mass. I also like the old Mass for different reasons, but I, I will say that it's, it's just astonishing to me the, if, if glory be to God, if they didn't have double standards, they wouldn't have any standards at all. Yeah. And this is certainly true about the left, but it infects the church in the strangest places yeah. and the strangest ways. And uh, the very thing that is most deep in our tradition is the very thing that has to go. Yeah, It's strange. Sin strange. gets a pass. Supernatural mm. must be tamped down. Yeah. That's the historic moment we're living right. in right now. Hmm. Yeah, so if somebody says, hey, this transgender activist wants to have a funeral. Sure, come on in, man. Oh. This Latin mass person wants to have a mass. Oh, wait a minute. Wait Please a minute. Talk. Yeah, wait, no, come on. Yeah. We got no. And this is the this is the bizarro world that we're living in right now, e yeah. even in the church. And it's so tragic. So tragic. You know, and I remember at one point the Lord turned on the apostles and said, How much longer must I tolerate you? <laughs> right. You know, what's the most common thing among the apostles in the Bible? I would it's called the inept response. Jesus gives a teaching, and within two or three verses, not only do they not get it, they're they're doing just the opposite. Right. So Jesus tells them about the greatest is going to be the servant, even the slave of all. Two verses later, they're debating about who's the greatest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, right. this is how we are in the church. So I'm not yeah. trying to say it's well, it's I think too that new. that's the historical moment we're in right now is that tamping down on the on tradition, supernatural, mm -hmm. and giving sin a pass, that's getting rewarded. They're yeah. getting elevated for doing right. that, right? And that's or, something that's yeah. infected the church. Or if you, but if you speak up against, you know, the the evils of our time, mm -hmm. uh Bishop yeah. Strickland. <laughs> You'll get Strickland. If... You'll get stricken, yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. You know, I think, uh, you know, basically as it comes down to there, a lot of them, again, let's be honest, there's also good bishops and so on. But sure. at the end of the day, they're tough on the sheep and tender to the wolves. Yeah. It's the strangest thing. It's the strangest thing. Of all. And and so this is a great tragedy. So, again, getting back to this, well, where's all this going? And what what it's going to get worse, I'm afraid. Now, I think some of us are hopeful that, well, maybe the, it's, things are so bad now that maybe the next pope will be a little more moderate. But, you know, frankly, moderate isn't even what we need. No. You know, Ed Penton wrote an article or gave a conference at the, uh, into, uh, the CIC, the Catholic Information Center here in D.C. And he'd interviewed a lot of people. And he said maybe one of the... One of the more common things he's heard among the faithful who are more traditional is that maybe the Lord is allowing this right now for us to see just how deep the infection of modernism is. And that some sort of moderate approach of trying to find a middle ground isn't going to be enough. We have to just go back to fighting modernism straight yes. on and say, no, no leeway. Yep. Um, but again, it's, uh, will that happen? And you well, can apply that to the culture. I think yeah. a lot is being allowed to yeah. see just how deep the Marxism is, mm -hmm. is gotten in our culture. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. most of us have, tr I mean, and including me, all my, you know, m much of my life as a priest, I've tried to find this middle ground. Let's kind of, you know, tip the hat in both directions and all that. And I, I've, I've had to come to see that got us nowhere. That right. be, it just meant it just let it just let the rot continue to grow so at some yep. point you just have to say look um this isn't gonna uh, a little bit of cleanup here isn't gonna do it we have to completely scour the place yep and i i, I don't I, I i don't know that we have 
the gumption to come up with a word. I can't, you know, the, to do it, frankly. And I think the Lord is going to have to, yeah, the, the, we're just going to, the Lord's going to have to just do something really striking, I know. really severe that will just knock the socks off of us and bring us really back to the stone age in terms of the church. I know where we don't have the time to uh, debate all this decadent stuff about whether there's more than one, two genders for heaven's sakes. Mm -hmm. Of course there is, but I I don't know. And I'm, I I, I will tell you this father, if you're bringing a great chastisement on the world, Lord, I have to negotiate with them sometimes. Take me out on the initial blast (laughs) because I can't hunt and I can't live without electricity. I I don't know what I do. (laughs) I'm the same way. If it's not if it's not ninety seconds of the microwave, it's not happening. <laughs> Father, at this point, I don't know. I don't. I'm, I know I'm talking too much, but I'm I'm known for that. <laughs> but I will say that I don't know uh, any. Wh- where's the reset button for this thing? Right. I don't think it's a minor thing. This is going to take unplugging the machine mm. and completely yep. rebooting it from scratch. Yeah. Yep. I I just don't see how doing your predictions. I remember the one in 2019. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, and by the way, you know, we've had some horrible things since then. Um, yep. That thing that took place in Canada, most people seem to forget, but the Pope stood there where this shaman danced to the, called on the four right. spirits of the north, south, east, and west. Right. Listen, I'm I'm going to just say from the exorcist community, don't call on demons. They tend to answer. Don't do that. Bad right. idea. Right. Bad idea department. And then and then they called on this grandmother spirit and all this kind of stuff. And the cardinals had their hands on their heart. And the oh. Pope was looking all like penitent. Oh, we're terrible because we preached the faith to the indigenous peoples. And oh, gosh, you know, the whole thing was such a fiasco. And it, that's largely been forgotten. But it was as bad, if not worse, as Pachamama. And we just, we've settled down with this stuff. And we got to say, this is desperately wrong. And God cannot go on tolerating this kind of stuff. Now, but here's the, the scary thought, Father and Doug, that the punishment for sin is more sin. And, you know, one ignominy, one stupidness, one thing that's more foolish. We, we, we seem to be on this quest to discover that rock bottom has to have a basement. Right. And it's just incredible. I mean, you keep thinking, how could it get any worse? And it yeah. does. You can't even make some of this stuff up that's going on today. And so in a way, it, it, we have to sort of understand something. It's not so much that God is going to punish us because of our sin, but that sin is God's punishment. Hmm. Okay, have it your way. I'm, I'm tired. I'm, I'm sick of, I'm not even going to punish you anymore. I'm just going to let you punish yourselves. Yeah. Like, I won't intervene because, you know, punishment is meant to ameliorate the full consequences of stupid, stupidity and sin. That's what, you know, a parent will punish a child so they experience in a small way what, you know, you know what the badness of this action rather than the full effects of it. Well, at some point, though, God says he handed them over. In the book of Romans, chapter 1, that says he handed them over to their iniquity, to the foolishness, to, de- to their debased conduct. You know, men did shameful things with men, women with women. And then they were heartless, you know, that whole litany in in Romans, heartless, stubborn, uh, disobeying their parents, hateful, you know, mean spirit, you know, just all the stuff that we get today. It's all there. I mean, while we're talking, I'll look it up right now. Romans 1, that section on homosexuality, but it's even, it gets gets even worse, you know, in that, in that passage. Um, Where's my, my, my Bible is right in front of me, right under my nose here. Of course it is, right? (laughs) <laughs> but it says here in Romans 1, where Paul talks about they suppressed the truth, and so their senseless yep. minds were darkened, and they became debased in their conduct. I'm just summarizing now, but wow. they became debased in their conduct, men doing shameful things with men, engaging in unnatural acts, women with un- unnatural acts with women, and uh, and it goes on, and, and it goes wow, on. 2024. And, yeah, so this, this one section here in that passage it says um god, therefore god handed them over handed them over to impurity through the lust of their hearts for the mutual degradation of their bodies exchanging the truth of god for a lie yes. All, tra- here, uh, here's the thing about transgenders you know that guy that swimming in those girls swim meets mm, yep. yeah you know people say well that's not fair you're, you're right it's not fair but here's the real problem it's a lie 
Mm. Right. It's right. a lie, and no one will call it. It's a lie. Right. He's not. Yeah, and a you're you're a spiritual leader saying that right out loud. How dare you? <laughs> I right? said it in my pulpit. Yeah. yeah. Well, I said I'm sick and tired of this. Oh, isn't that fair? Well, listen. I say that all the time. Life isn't fair. It's not about whether it's fair. It's just that it's a lie. Yep. And we need to call it that. You and see, that's what good dads do with their children, and we're called father. Yeah. Now listen to this, Romans 28. So you're saying, well, what is to come? Tell me if this isn't already a tour guide of our times and a tour of what's to come. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God handed them over to their undiscerning minds to do what is improper. They're filled with every form of wickedness, evil, greed, malice, full of envy, murder, rivalry, treachery, and spite. They're gossip, scandal mongers, and they hate God. They're insolent, haughty, boastful, ingenious in their wickedness, and rebellious toward their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. And although they know the just decree of God and those who practice such things deserve death, they not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. 2024. That's it. Yeah. It's, yeah. uh, it's, 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 it is a tour guide to where we are today. Yep. And this is, uh, at some level, how much lower can we go? And I, I don't know, but so, I know it, we're not there yet. Monsignor, then when you see what's happening in the world with regards to, you know, the rise of escalation of wars and, you know, cyber attacks, and, mm -hmm. you know, at the time we record this, we just had the recent AT&T cell phone situation. They claimed that it was... Um, you know, an upgrade issue that caused some sort of, uh, you know, computer glitch or whatever they wanted mm -hmm. to call it. But many people are saying that it really looks more like it's most likely some sort of cyber attack. Regardless of that one, there have been many others. And at the same time, a major health company, um, I'm going to forget the name, so I'm not going to try to say it, but they are connected to pharmacies all across the country. And they mm -hmm. did come out, I think, a day or two before the AT&T, you know, uh, cell phone issue. And they said they did have a cybersecurity issue. They had to disconnect from pharmacies. Pharmacies were not able to get medications out to people all over the country. This is happening. Yeah. Water treatment plants, communications, this and that. Rise and escalation of right. talk of war and such. Ukraine, Middle East, Holy Land's attacked on October 7th. Yeah. All these things. Is it a coincidence in your opinion? No, it's not. And we were also being reminded by all your examples there what a very thin veneer civilization really mm -hmm. is. Right. And just one or two little things like the yeah. collapse of a power grid. Yeah. And just, I mean, take the lid off of oh, everything, right. you know, rioting and just everything you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Total loss of social order is just, you know, a very, very thin veneer between us and, and a total lack of civilization. And unfortunately, because of this, um, indulgence of the flesh um it's much more on a hair trigger now yeah and see at least you know back, maybe a uh, hundred years ago i mean I know electrical power wasn't you know but you get the idea there was at least some still some sense of basic decency and uh, respect for other human beings mm -hmm. um but after years of video games and movies and everything featuring violence and hatred as the solution um you know even our entertainment it's, it's all about the culture of death. Now, look, I like a good adventure movie, but I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> the whole approach of a typical adventure movie is totally anti-gospel. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, I'll save you some money. Here's every adventure movie. You've ever, it all has the same plot. Some unambiguously evil event and some evilly, unambiguously evil person commits an atrocious act. Um, and um, he, uh, he does this for no good reason. And uh, suddenly then our hero steps on the scene. He's flawed, but he's a good guy. And after about 90 minutes of killing people, breaking things, and blowing up stuff, uh, he's somewhere along the line, he has to pick up a girl, too. Uh, he finally comes to the final showdown with the evil guy, kills him, and walks away with girl in arm, burning city in the background, roll credits. You see? So, you know, a, a steady diet of violence, uh, mm -hmm. these video games and these things that kids have been playing for years that, that just you lop off heads, you de decapitate right. people, you cut off arms and legs, you do terrible things. And uh, it doesn't make, you know, if, if we do have some kind of like a power grid that goes down just like that, I, there, there isn't even the basic decency 
that most people have experienced that'll mm -hmm. keep them from doing so some awful, awful things. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, my only point in saying all this is to, to respond to your point that we're, we're on a hair trigger. Also look at how quickly we could, we gave away all of our rights and almost all of them. I mean, we, we let them make us, they closed our stores, they closed our churches. They told us we, you know, and they, 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 they decided what would be open liquor stores are necessary. Churches are not right. uh, massage parlors are necessary. Uh, churches and uh, synagogues are not. And, and we, we, we submitted to this and we were in panic. Yep. And we turned on each other and look how we treated each other and all these people running around trying to just destroy you. If you said, well, I'm not so sure this is that serious. <gasps> you must be silenced. Cancel culture, all the stuff that all those riots in the streets, all of that. This is we're on a hair trigger right now. The whole world is seismic. And I, I would simply say that um, it, even the next election might be the trigger. Something is going to just bring a complete set of you know just just it, we're going to be yeah. at each other's throats and it's hard to imagine any other way out of it it's a scary year with the election like you said mm -hmm. uh, uh monsignor our time is getting shorter here and i wanted to hit this real quick uh just before i hopped on or i hopped on with you guys to record uh i checked out social media and the first thing that popped up was cardinal burke he's got a little video and people can try to find that pretty easy but oh. He's calling for a nine-month novena okay. leading mm -hmm. up to the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe on December 12th. Oh, and yeah. so I think he's starting it on March 12th uh, to make it nine months. But um, uh, wow. And we, we were talking earlier about those who, who are tuned in, but <clears throat> you used the term in, in the scripture passage, I believe, it was the undiscerning mind, right? Yeah. The yeah. undiscerning mind. Mm -hmm. That's what, when, when you're disconnected from the divine life, from the power of grace, right. you can no longer discern. Mm -hmm. And discern is a great word. You discern what? What God wants. And you also discern what the devil's doing. Right. And, and, and so you, have to, first of all, you can try to get people in a power of grace. But mm -hmm. but you you warn them you mm -hmm. or you you help them to understand well if there's uh, any discer yeah. discerning mind uh, live on the planet Earth it's Cardinal Burke mm -hmm. uh, and he you know when he's given this little talk in that video uh, it reminded me of your ashen look you had when uh, Pachamama <laughs> was brought out you know and, yeah. uh, he, no he's he seems this is serious he's praying praying mm -hmm. for the country praying for the world yeah. and he has that that look on his face like listen to me. This is right. serious. Um, right. yeah. Monsignor, uh, with the few minutes we have left, uh, of course, we want to, We would like to join Cardinal Burke in that, but what should mm. we do personally to have that discerning mind, to, to, to unite if, we, if there's a way at all? Mm -hmm. to, to, what, what can we be doing right now uh, to, tr you know, like the Ninevites, yeah. you know, that, that, uh, that mm. God will relent in, in his, I call it a God spanking, you know, mm. but yeah. Uh, right. yeah. Uh, well, I have right got, now in the yeah, but again, reparation is very important. So, yeah, prayer, fasting, alms, giving in Lent, but also reparation. I have 40 hours devotion we're going to do here in early March. Okay. And the idea is to come pray because, you know, of all the ignominies committed against Christ and the Blessed Sacrament, okay. we've got to gather and pray and uh, make reparation. Reparation. Um, now, reparation, of course, the best reparation is to live a holy and decent life in the middle right. of this quagmire that we're in. Yep. Um, and uh, set up little colonies of light. So I think it's important to end on a note of confidence. First of all, we are on the winning team. Yes. I checked the last page of scripture. I cheated. I read the last page. Jesus wins. <laughs> oh, we're on the winning team. Bravo. But the point is that we should start acting like we're on the winning yeah. team and not be so dismayed that some people are against us or what have you. It just act like you're on the winning team. Trust what the Lord said. Stop being so afraid. Preach his gospel. Teach and live his gospel publicly. Um, and don't be so, you know, hiding out and kind of, uh, you know, the kind of stuff that we do. Because we already have the victory in Christ Jesus, and we ought to act that way. It may be, you know, we're on our own one-yard line. We, we're, we're behind by four points or whatever. Right. we got to make a touchdown. And it's, it's only 20 seconds left on the clock, but Jesus is the quarterback and he's just about to throw the hail Mary yep. and uh, it's, we're going to win. 
Yeah. But the question is. But at is, the same time, to, to, you're not saying, and this is the the thing, and I know you're not saying this, but mm -hmm. a lot of people will say, God's got this. Mm -hmm. And then and then they go, like I said, say, then they go shopping and golfing. Yeah, you know, um, I know, yeah. No, we, you, you've got to get, you got to get locked into that divine life, get that flow yeah. of grace coming mm -hmm. in so yeah. you could have a discerning mind. So yeah, you what can, you're kind of describing there is a, it's kind of a fence sitter, you know, you know, mm -hmm. uh, well, I don't want to really have to, you know, go out there and fight and go against the other team. I, I, I'm going to kind of be in the middle here. Uh, I don't, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not this or that. I'm going to just sort of sit on the fence. Well, Satan owns the fence. Okay. Yep. You got to choose sides yep. and, choosing christ you know clearly and not just like okay now i can go play golf just the opposite i've chosen christ so i'm going to live in a certain way and he didn't say hey if you do this everything would just be fine he said the opposite he says they're going to persecute you haul you in the court they're going to do all these things but don't you ever lose heart because i'm telling you right now you will be glorified in heaven blessed are those who are persecuted for they will be, you know, they will inherit the kingdom of God, you see. Yep. So this is the thing for all of us to have this courage that's rooted in a joyful confidence. Yes. So many people lack today, yep. you know, that I'm on the right side. And look, yep. this, like a final thought, you know, I'll, I'll be, I promise I'll shut up. <laughs> look, the church has been here for 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. And if you want to include our Jewish years, 3,000 years, 5,000 years we've been at this thing. Mm -hmm. Nations have come and gone, epochs, whole kingdoms have risen and fallen, heresies have come and gone, all this stuff, all in the age of the church. And here we are still preaching the same gospel. They're never going to get rid of us. Christendom may have come and gone, but the church is still here, and we're still going to keep preaching this thing till the day we die, even if there's only four or five of us at the foot of the cross, the church might get smaller, but we're going to keep doing it and we're going to win yes. because we're with Jesus. So if you need to just be that four or five people that are left at the foot of the cross on Good Friday, be among them, be John, be Magdalene, be Mother Mary, yep. you know, be there. Nice. And that's, I've, that's what it means yep. to uh, accept that, you know, you're on the winning team, not just go we're play on the ball. winning team champions for Christ, right? Amen. Yeah. Hey, uh, Monsignor, could you close us with your fight with a blessing? Yes. All right. Lord, we, we, we have this word courage, which, uh, for us is rooted in two words, courage is a heart, a heart that's able to do. And so we ask you, Lord, to, um, give us the strength and the confidence to go out and to do what courage demands, to have that courage, that to have that capacity to act because of a, we have a strong heart, your heart in us, your light, your truth. So plant it deep. Put it like a fire in our bones, as Jeremiah said, and help us to, with a holy zeal, get up each day and fight the good fight and uh, be less concerned about the losses that this world can inflict for eternity and eternal glory are ours if we stay faithful. So set our minds right. Give us courage. Give us strength. Help us, Lord. Save us. Have mercy on us. And keep us always by your grace. And may Almighty God bless every and all individuals who listen to this podcast and spread that news and give us all that courage. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thanks so much, Monsignor. Thank you, Monsignor. Right.